obviously you had um, success with with Argent and things like that. And Hold Your Head Up was a huge hit, wasn't it? Top five in the UK and US and Canada. I mean, that was fantastic. But despite that success, you've spoken in the past about how hard you found things kind of at that time period. And you've spoken about the depression and things that you suffered at the time. And and looking back, how hard was it for you? Because it wasn't the sort of time where men spoke about that or people spoke about anything like that, was it at all? I always did, Paul. I always okay. did. I always talked about it. It, didn't, it never bothered me. It never bothered me to talk about it. And it does help people. I know yeah. that. But, uh, you know, when you think you're going to die every day, you know, <laughs> then you sort of, you don't mind what you say to people, what you, you know, what you actually say or whatever. And uh, it doesn't make any difference. You become stronger once you've had depression. But uh, it was mainly when I look back now, I was trying to write songs. I was trying to be in a band, Argent. Uh, we had a deal where I was writing some songs for the band. Rod was writing songs for the band. Chris White was writing songs for the band. And we were gigging in between. So I, I'm a lark. I get up very early every day, and I always have done, and I still do. Um, I used to get up. I lived with my mum and dad like in 1968 and I used to get up at eight o'clock, uh, seven o'clock and I used to write every day. So I'd write from seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, that five, like four or five hours. I'd write. I loved it. So, I mean, I used to do it, but the problem was when Argent were also on the road, they'd turn up after five hours or four or five hours writing. They'd turn up in the car with the driver, and I'd jump into the car. Then we'd drive to Manchester, Liverpool, or we'd go to Birmingham, Coventry, Wolverhampton, Aston, anywhere of those places, and we'd do gigs. And so, you know, we'd play uh, Manchester University, Birmingham, or any sort of university towns. We'd get home at 3 o'clock in the morning, 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> I'd go to bed. I'd be up at seven o'clock writing and uh, the same thing would happen the next day, be in the car again. I did that for two years. Basically, it was exhaustion. It was um, not getting the right food on the road and becoming uh, anemic, uh, exhausted, basically, and being dehydrated most of the time. And... Um, so that's what happens, you know, you become, they used to call it in the media, emotion, becoming emotionally exhausted, I think it used to be called then. And that's what happened to me. I never cancelled a show. And, you know, but you walk around in a daze, you know, because I never experienced anything like depression before. You know, it was new to me. But it's great coming out of it. Yeah. Absolutely. It's so great because you realize you can survive it and you come out the other end. You can come out the other end, you know, just hang in. Sometimes you need medication. Some people don't need medication, but it's good to have medication, get out the other end. And then, uh, as I've said before, sky is bluer, trees are greener, and life is, life is better, you know. It's uh, wonderful. There is always a way and there's always someone to speak to. And and I'm, I'm so glad to hear that you were able to speak about it at the time as well, because it is difficult for anybody. Yeah, it was difficult for men then. Yeah. But I've always been kind of uh, okay with myself, you know, as far as my uh, masculinity is concerned, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, and it's just one of those things, you know, can happen. You read about footballers having depression, cricketers having depression, and, uh, rugby players having depression. Um. And that's okay. That's okay. If you can come out of it, it just it enhances your life. It, it adds to your life, you know. And I think that's the songwriting, especially <laughs> because if you can if you can actually identify with this depressive side of yourself, it can it can turn into some good songs, you know. I wrote. I don't believe in miracles for Colin. Yes. Not yes. for Colin, but I wrote it for myself because I was, and I explain in that song exactly how I was feeling. When I wrote I Don't Believe in Miracles, I put my head on the keys and just put my head on the keys and cried, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then everyone after said, oh, it's a wonderful song. That's an amazing song, amazing song, you know, because I think they feel what went into it. <laughs> 